Hi everyone, so going through 1.33 uh, input devices, there probably will be a mix of answers here, so uh, let's get cracking. I guess actually right away, the things that jump to my mind is, is exam technique and try and take a highlighter into the exam so you can, I know I just highlighted everything here, it's cheap, um, but I should have highlighted the describe part and the number of marks right away because one of the things that lets the students down is, is just simple exam techniques. So for this one, it's relying on us having a, a knowledge of all of these different uh, input um, technologies on a touch screen. Interesting thing about this is it quite often comes up in a question saying, describe the difference, or sorry, a device that's an input and an output device in one. So that would obviously be these touch screen. Um, so, Pick your favourite, it's important to know all of them. Um, let's just go through them, we've got resistive, and we'll just make bullet points for these ones. So resistive have multiple layers um, that has electric current. Um, so you've got the lower layer, which we'll just try and draw here. We have the lower layer, and then we have the upper layer on the outside, and then when you press down on it, it touches the, the screen on the lower bottom layer, which is another point you can make, and then that, that current of where it touches is then calculated. So for these, there's nothing wrong with drawing um, a little diagram to help you to um, uh, describe your answer, so try and plan it a bit first. Then we've obviously got capacitive next. Capacitive. And that one, uh, I'll just draw up here for capacitive. We have the four corners uh, where the, the current's flowing out. So we have that current flowing out across the whole screen, which is the first point. So current flows from the four corners. Um, and this is the one you can use a finger or a stylus, which is what I'm using. Um, the current changes. Therefore, we can calculate where that is. If we calculate the touch. So there's like, that's about three or four points there for each of those. And for the infrared, Let's try and just draw infrared. Uh, so for this one, we could draw the screen and maybe use a different pen and talk about how we have this invisible matrix. So it has an invisible grid um, using uh, infrared light beams. So uh, what happens with that one is it's got a uh, it calculates the touch, or calculates location um, using sensors. Squeeze that in there, using sensors to detect uh, where that's been touched, i.e. where the infrared beam's been broken. So if you have the sensor and the beam and then you touch somewhere with a finger, then that beam can then uh, detect where it's been touched using the sensors and the infrared um, LEDs. Okay, uh, so I won't I won't go over these in this video again. If you need to see those, unless there's any important ones, we'll come back. To, I'll just refer back to this slide so you can see just how often uh, these types of questions come up. So what we're looking at here. Um, so for this one, um, you can pick any one again. Uh, we should could have covered this in the last slide. So resistive is the one that we get on. Uh, airplanes which is what helps me remember that it's cheap and therefore inexpensive uh, to manufacture and it's basically you don't need no special input devices so you can use um, you can touch it with the airplane food so uh, you could use a finger gloves your nose um, basically anything, uh, the stylus as well if you want, a pen, literally anything you can touch it with and it will detect uh, that. So we want to say that it's cheap, 
but that's to, to manufacture it, to build it. Yeah, so build and manufacture, which is why they use it on aircraft. Um, drawbacks to that one is that it's, uh, um, I mean, the other one is actually, it's quite, it's quite durable as well, but over time, um, it can become scratched, so it's not massively um, durable, uh, wears out. So again, time, um, multiple touch, multi-touch is not multi-touch capable, uh, what else? And I guess like the, it's just not the best, so the visibility is poor. I, should actually, I think a good idea for this is to go and write this a bit neater than I have in a table. Uh, capacitive is obviously the, the expensive one that we get on all of our uh, current mobile devices. Um, so it has, let's just write it here, try and write it a bit better, capacitive. Um, so we've got good visibility and sunlight. Um, it's very durable, although maybe you'll disagree if you've dropped yours, but it is very, very durable. We get multi-touch. So those are all benefits of capacitive. Some of the drawbacks are of it, um, you can't uh, use it with gloves, etc. It's got to detect, and we know that from how it touches or how the touch works, that it, um, the, the current flows out, so it's got to have like something that can conduct that current to touch it. So you would need to touch it with something. I mean, a drawback wearing gloves to touch a screen is not bad, unless you're in the cold weather. Um, and I guess the fact, even though we said it's very durable, the drawback is it will shatter uh, if uh, dropped or broken, which I'm sure many of you, my writing is terrible again, um, have, have probably already encountered with your devices. Um, so the, the final one, infrared, it's got good durability. Uh, it also allows multi-touch. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, they are expensive to manufacture though. Manufacture. Uh, what else? Um, if it, that's that's the one when my board's dirty, so it doesn't. It's not really great. So, and in fact, I don't know if you remember when my books were accidentally leaning against it. So sensitive to dirt and dust. Uh, that was that was how that one was what. Um, and again, you can use anything to touch that one. So the only one that you, you need human flesh, let's just say, is the capacitive one. The other ones, um, well, you touch them with anything, i.e. the fact that there was dirt on the board or, or the book or black pen when it's not been erased properly, it was detecting that as a touch. Um, it's, it's obviously, again, it'll shatter. So there's similarities between the capacitive so in terms of, if you want to argue the best, most expensive capacitive, then infrared, then resistive in terms of price, um, durability in that, that, well, in terms of it being scratched, the resistive one's cheap to manufacture, and it's fairly durable on aircraft and so on. Uh, again, big reading area to understand. This is a really good one for our notes here. Now again, get a highlighter pen and go through and pick out the ones you know. So copies paper document and converts text and pictures into a readable form. Read them all first. Read the labels containing parallel dark and light lines. So I'm thinking that must be something like a barcode using laser or light or LEDs. The width of each line represents a binary code. Well, I'm pretty convinced that that's uh, something to do with barcodes. Again, I, I know we can see it on the screen, but I haven't looked at these yet. Detects changes in acidity levels. Data is often in analog form something to do with analog digital converter, device that allows audio signals to convert it into electric signals interpreted by a computer after being converted into digital form. Now I'm just highlighting those to attract your attention, um, but the one that I'm most confident about is this one. So I'm pretty sure that that's barcode. So let's see if there's anything to do with barcode. There we go. We've got barcode reader. So let's link that up. Uh, and then we've got an application that it goes along with. So obviously not voice recognition, monitoring soil, automatic stock control is obviously the one there of that being used in stores and so on. Uh, the next one I was most confident on is the acidity levels. I'm pretty sure that's something to do with sensors detecting pH. There we go. 
and where would we use that? Well, we're not going to use a pH sensor for voice recognition or reading passports, and we've already ruled one out. So monitoring soil in a greenhouse, easy. Now the next one, this one, I was sure it was something to do with a scanner or something, but the next one allows audio signals. I knew that was microphone, and I'm sure you did too. And then with the use of microphone, we know it's going to be voice recognition, which basically answers the last one for us if I wasn't sure. So that's going to be the uh, copying paper documents and then that being used to read passports. So again, a little bit of exam technique to figure that out. You can see it's worth six marks only and you've got to get eight things correct. So quite frustrating if you, if you get one incorrect, I think it actually costs you two marks. And maybe that. Let's see, um, including your answer, let's see, describe. So let's get exam technique to describe how the sensor, microprocessor and light and the switch, oh my goodness, there's a lot here. Microprocessor drops the street lights being frequently switched on and off due to brief changes in light sensitivity. There is a lot here. This is uh, probably would take me longer to answer. So what I'm going to do is pause this and draw a flow chart. So I've got a ridiculously bad drawing here and I apologise. We know looking at the marks, we need five marks. So if you look at my rubbish diagram here, some of the things we need to talk about, and I'll, I'll just use the highlighter here to try and highlight this. So um, we could start off with talking about the fact that the um, to switch, switch the light on and off. So it might be depending on a certain time of day, but that's not in the question. So you can see that I've got a loop in my uh, diagram that's really important to talk about how this is a continuous process where the um, the light sensor is constantly detecting an analog signal to represent the um, light level that then is passed to the microprocessor after it's been converted to digital by an analog to digital converter so i've got i'm at three marks already the fact i've talked about this being a continuous process we can talk about how the microprocessor is in charge of sending all the messages and comparing, uh, sorry, controlling this process, which comes back to the fetch execute cycle, which is basically what this is. Now it says something in the question about the, the brief changes in light intensity. So what I have said is, is the microprocessor um, sends the, the digital data to the ALU, which is going to make comparisons. It's going to compare the uh, light level which has been converted to digital to a predetermined um, level, which is when the lights need to go on, if, i.e. If it's, if, it's if it's dark enough for the lights to switch on. Now, um, it's not explained very, very well. This would be more complex than I've made it. If the lights uh, have only been on for uh, five seconds, for example, you don't want to switch back off again so what we can maybe do is then there's tons of ways to draw this out but i've just talked there about if if the time is uh, also over the limit of when you want it to switch on and off and those things are true then it would send a message to the light to tell it to switch on or obviously the opposite is true as well if the um, light level is detected really really bright i.e it's seven in the morning and the sun's coming up then it's going to send the message to the light switch telling it to turn off but i guess key points here talking about how this is a continuous process for any of these questions you've got a continuous process where the sensor is constantly detecting the analog signal, whether it's the pH sensor, whether it's a light sensor, whether it's gas, oxygen, um, whatever it happens to be, um, which is converted to analog to digital, the microprocessor is controlling that process, the ALU is making decisions, it's making comparisons to um, predetermined, pre-stored values, and it's sending messages out via the microprocessor um, to the output devices, whatever device it happens to be, um, and the circuitry. Um, these are all um, straightforward to get. Uh, just get get across the fact here it's, it's continuous. We've got the microprocessor being sent the signal, which is converted using ADC, um, comparing with stored values. Um, the one thing that we want to get across in this one is that it can be on and off. And also, remember, we've got the actuators, actually, which I forgot about. Um, but now else has talked about those. Those are the actual 
parts that would do the physical moving to turn things on and again. Uh, different sensors other than pH, light, and describe the different sensors. So there's there's tons we could have there. So let's just list them all. We've got infrared, and we'll just come back here um, if we need to, or refer back to this side. We've got temperature. We would have sound. We've got uh, humidity. What else? Uh, pressure. Come up in your exam. Oh, well, it depends what year you're watching this in. Pressure. We could maybe have oxygen or gas as well, same, same, but different. Magnetic, uh, we got light, uh, there's, there's tons more. I mean, anything anything will go. Um, so tricky ones for some of these, I'll do the hard ones first. Magnetic usually comes up talking about uh, anti-lock braking and also you would get those in um, um, CD players as well, uh, possibly have a look at those ones for different ones. Light sensors, we just covered it being uh, to switch lights on and off again, could be for lots of different reasons. Infrareds, what we get in the supermarkets where doors autom open automatically or burglar alarms. Temperature, controlling things in greenhouses and ovens, uh, your home aircon. Sound, you could say burglar alarms, uh, automatic lighting. Uh, Humidity, something to do with soil and greenhouses. It could be um, the aircon in your home as well, clothes dryers. Pressure plates, again, you could say something to do with, um, could be pressure in tanks for like chemical processing, burglar alarms, again. One of the examples that come up was um, controlling the number of people entering and exiting stores. Oxygen could be in fish tanks to monitor the levels of pollution in water. Um, Inside uh, fish tanks, did we say that? Gas, similar again, inside chemical plants to check for gas buildup. So again, I'll refer back to this one. You'll see a lot of repetition in questions for these. Uh, there we go, barcode readers, microphones, uh, touchscreen infrared sensors in terms of how they will be used. So barcodes could be for supermarkets, libraries, um, to read barcodes to get the prices. Microphone could be voice recognition to convert the, the, the spoken analog words into the digital representation, which is then displayed as words on screen. Could be video conferencing. Touch screen allow you to interact with uh, devices that could be devices in a supermarket for um, when you do self checkout. It could be on the kiosks when you go shopping and some of the more modern shopping centers. Infrared sensors could be automatic doors opening up, uh, could be um, the automatic barriers on car parks, which could detect cars, which again might be pressure sensors. So again, I'm sure you could pick up the marks there. What we're looking at marks-wise is eight marks. That's a, that's a very straightforward question that we need to um, make sure that we are answering very well. Now, it just says give a different application and then how it's used needs a little bit more. So this can be maybe like two words, but in here we're looking for a little bit of sentence, maybe like one or two sentences just to cover um, your back to make sure you've described it well enough. Uh, passenger logs into airline website, reference numbers, choose the seat, uh, barcode scan, one input device at the check-in desk. Well, I mean, we've already answered this one um, for, for this at the check-in. So we've got barcode scanner. Now, hopefully you guys have traveled enough um, to know this one. Now, some of the other things, uh, the reason for it is going to be to scan the barcode and the boarding pass. Other answers they could here say is find at the check-in desk and give a reason for your choice. Just think about the check-in desk. They've also got a pressure sensor, i.e. the scales, they were your bags, and then they've got a keyboard um, for any issues. I'd also argue that they've got um, vision recognition systems and cameras as well. Uh, output device, I mean, it's the same question from different ones. We've got a printer for anyone that needs to print out their barcode. We would have a screen so that uh, the person entering their, um, their details can see what's being edited. Uh, the device that allows audio signals can be converted into electrical signals interpreted by a computer. Uh, so that's that's a microphone. 
but if you're if you're concerned about whether it's asking for that, just write analog to digital converter, but it wants the name of the device converter. Just put it all down and the, the marker's just gonna look at microphone and mark it and move on. Uh, okay, what have we got here? Uh, so this is a, possibly a, a kind of crossover um, question from uh, a flow chart to do with input devices. Actually very good uh, for answering that previous question. So we've got a barcode scan in a supermarket. Several of the statements are missing. Uh, I had flagged, flagged to product to indicate the order made. So they're, not, they're obviously not in the correct order just for us to throw them in. Uh, so let's see, uh, and it's to do with um, reordering. So let's see if we can figure it out without looking at answers. Oops. So we scan the barcode. Let's get the highlighter so that make a mess. Scan the barcode. We look it up in the stock database. Um, I assume it's going to be something to do with uh, if the if the stock's greater than zero, something along those lines. Yes. Then we can order or add to basket. Um, if it's not, ooh, is that going to be something like buy it? Now let's just look at the answers. Yeah, if we can't buy it, uh, then we're going to get some sort of uh, problem. So we're going to have an, an error or something like order more. Good, well, it's an output device. It might be like, say, we need to order more of this product. Um, oh, where's that one going? Let's see. More back out, puts the scan. It's going back up, so repeating that one's no. Okay. All right. Uh, basically, I should have paused this video and come back. So, order, though, uh, let's see. Order maybe something to do with adding to the basket here. Uh, ooh, it's a tricky one. Okay, got to look at the answers now and just see where we can add it. I can't figure it out perfectly. Uh, let's see. So... Yeah, there we go. Output an error message for that one. So we're going to want that here. We want to output an error message um, to say that we must need to reorder that or it's out of stock or something. And then we're obviously going to want to ask the user if they've got more barcodes to scan. If not, we can see that that goes uh, to the end. Interesting, could I just draw that back there? So, any more barcodes to scan? Yes, no. Uh, let's see. So, the one that we're going to get there is going to be number three to see if the uh, scan, scan barcodes and found in file, which is why we're getting the error. If it is, uh, we want to test the, yeah, there we go, that's what, that's what I was getting at earlier if it's less than the reorder level. So that one's going to be used at number six, not five. Uh, yeah. So you want to have three. Yeah. If it is in stock, we want to order it by, i.e. reducing the number of stock, reduce by one. After we do that, we would do number five to test if we need to reorder it or not, because if the stock's less than the stock order we level, we will do something. Oh my goodness, this is a tricky long question. Uh, so we've tested if it's in stock. If it's not in stock, or sorry, we don't need to reorder it, we go around and scan it, and now we've got three more, so it's good that we've not, not did this one. So we'll add flag to product. We have not used, has the reorder flag already been added to the product? Uh, automatically send out new order for product, so four, one, and eight. So the only one of those was, was a decision we've got left straightforward, that's four. Has the flag already been set to reorder? As in, has it been ordered multiple times? And therefore it's reduced. These last two, one and eight, add flag to indicate reorder made, automatically send. It actually doesn't matter what way around they go actually. So one and eight is totally fine. That is quite a time consuming question for only four marks too. So again, I've, I've probably made that horrible by trying to plan it out myself. So on reflection for that, I would just go through, have a read. I, I don't think it's a bad idea to take pencil and try to do what I do to get your own understanding of how it works. A good one would be to look at these uh, keywords that are given away. Um, so the, the mistake we've got has, has, is, uh, let's see, 
So th those are obviously three, four, and five. If we look at the diagram now, we we'll say three, four, and five were our, uh, oh, and number two, sorry, uh, enabled barcodes to scan, were all questions of a sort, um, which is a good place to, to start. A better cheat, actually, on reflection is the fact that now that I look at it, there was there only before I say this, there's only one uh, input or output that, that we've got to do. And if we look back at that one, number seven is the only thing that outputs. So I think my exam techniques just improved by doing this. I'm going to look at this and think what's inputs, what's outputs, and what's decisions and possibly even more so than the decision what's actually a loop, what's going to repeat things, uh, like start again. So we know like that one, number two, looking at it on reflection now, it's going to be part of a loop uh, and to start things again. Has it been scanned in a file? It's just a yes, no. Uh, that, that number two is going to start the full process again, which might have helped a bit earlier if I'd have looked at that. So good to actually improve my own exam technique, to be honest, on that one. Um, to explain it better to you guys. That's a mess, sorry, but at least we got the correct answer. Uh, next. Sensors, camera, uh, all into the, into the uh, okay, so this is similar to that previous question again. So I'll try and draw a different diagram. You've got, you've got the device, which is working in analog, yeah, that's constantly repeating. It's forever, infinite loop. We're passing that using an A to D, into the microprocessor, which is sending data to the ALU, which then either sends messages back to, oh sorry, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one, uh, sending messages uh, to an output device, and it just it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and on, um, this process. So we've got one sensor camera, so we've got, um, the uh, signal converted to analog to digital one mark microprocessor is obviously going to send messages back continuously to tell the camera to take a nice picture of people as they come in. That signal is then converted to analog to digital. The microprocessor is going to control that process uh, and it's going to use the ALU to compare the biometric data that it's capturing. Um, to pre-stored biometric information and uh, if it matches it's going to send an, a message to an output device that could be just a, a message on a screen, it could be an alarm system that it says it identifies someone. Look at the marks you're right, try and think of this process, you get input, process, output and continuous loop. So even just reflecting on the fact that it's input, process, output, continuous is going to get you four marks. The other mark comes from talking about how the pre-stored data is stored and compared. And if you look back at that previous question we did, um, you'll see that it's the exact same principle you that, and that type of question comes up uh, all the time. So we've got RAM, ROM, solid state drive, radio signals, a uh, certain frequency, the manufacturer sets the frequency, it can't be changed. The owner of the model car can input their own sequence of movements from an interface underneath the car. The owner needs to be able to enter on sequence of movements from the model car. Uh, suitable input device, so it's, it's on the bottom um, of the car, all right? So possibly, uh, well, like a keypad on there. And I guess if it was expensive enough, you might get a touch screen like you have, well, on a, a GoPro, for example. It's the same, similar idea. It would obviously be very expensive. Um, if you think of all the input devices you could have there, um, LED screen, LCD screen, some sort of touch screen would have to be specific on the type, because if you want to pay $1,000 for a car that's got a, a capacity touch screen, fair enough. Uh, keyboard input device, would it work? No, that would be dumb, it would be huge. I mean, uh, yeah, not the best one. Um, also, it's, it's going to be small. Does it say anything about the size of it? Car received. Yeah, I think uh, there we want to make sure something small. There's a limited number of uh, options. I mean, you'd never use a mouse or a keyboard or any of those sort of ridiculous options just because to keep it small. 
uh, following sensors, different application. Now, we've already answered that one. Uh, have a look back. This one that people tend to forget, or I guess you don't know. Uh, Anti-lock brakes on the car um, is, is what it's used as well. Now, they also use them at traffic lights. To detect whether there's cars present or not, uh, is a couple of good uses for that. Make sure you've got at least two or three for each different uh, application use for each of those one. Now we've got another one of these questions again. So we've got the uh, input, we've got the process. And then we've got the output. And then we've got that continuous loop. Right, so we've got one, two, three marks. See if we talk about that one. If you mention A to D here, that's a fourth mark. And then the fifth mark is going to be that comparison, the ALU, uh, you can even just say the microprocessor um, with pre stored values. All right. First job, look at the number of marks and think about making five points. Uh, scanned photographs. Uh, just read that. Uh, excuse me. Computer checks the image matches the scanned one. So that's that's basically the middle part that we just talked about in the, those previous ones. So we've got the scanned um, photograph. So again, does it match? Is that comparison? That's uh, important. So basically, the data is already scanned in. It's already converted uh, into digital format by the camera. All things that you can see. That data is then uh, passed, and um, you can compare the biometric features on the face to those that are stored in a database. Okay, another one here. Let's see if we can apply the exam technique and look at um, what we've got in that table before we start. So countdown in minutes. Let's let's look for. We'll go for green to say things that are um, conditions. So let's see. Uh, we've got a condition there. The microprocessor compares. So we know that that one's going to be a condition. The rinser, let's see, switch the street on, sensor reading sent to the microprocessor. There's two more uh, conditions. So we've got, we've got one, two, three. Uh, take that back. And just real checking, let's undo all that. Uh, time zero is the, is the street lamp already on? Question, question. So we've got three conditionals you want to do. You know, it looks like there's no outputs here that we can use that um, previous cheat. So let's go through and we'll do the, the loops first. So let's think through this. Read light sensor, um, the reading being sent to microprocessor, microprocessor compares it. So these are, in fact, these are the ones we just spoke about. Input, process, output, let's leave them though. Then we have the condition, is the light reading less than 50? Is the street lamp already on? This actually answers the previous question we had. Uh, or is the time equals zero, which is already in there. We can see time equals zero twice. So that's gonna be the part that makes it repeat and repeat and repeat. So uh, number four here is the one that there would be a loop rather than like just a straight up decision. So I know that's number four, which is gonna make it start again. And think about all of our things going on input, process, output for the next part. So we've got number four done. Is the street lamp already on? Well, look, there's a clue for that one. Is the street light, street light already off? Is the light reading less than 50? So that's the part to say that it needs to go again. So I know that that one's going to be two. And if the street lamp's already on, then we don't actually have to do anything. So there's us made this a bit simpler by looking for the conditional statements first. Now we can think about, we've got input, process, output that needs to happen, time set to 10 minutes, so something here um, down in this area to do with uh, setting the counter, turning it on and off again. 
So is the street light already off and the light level is less than 50? Uh, let's see. So two, is the street lamp already on? Yes. So number three. If it's on, yes, no. Set the time to 10 minutes. And then we want to, we want to do number eight here, even though it's already on. Let's go reset the timer. And then, uh, Countdown minutes, yeah, we've actually got an answer there. So you can see that loop repeating so that it can't be turned on and off. So it'd be stuck in this loop here for a while. Uh, that's actually that's a very confusing one, this. And then that leaves us uh, with those first one. I should have done these first again, um, thinking about what inputs we've got. So we've got six sent to the microprocessor and then five reading compared with stored values. I've said a couple of times in the previous questions, but looking at that input process output, that's exactly what we should be given in those previous ones. So if the street light is already off, if it's not already off, we want to turn it off. And that leaves us with which one needs turned on? Uh, nine, time set to 10 minutes so that it would stay on for at least that length of time. Uh, those are actually tricky. Again, that's what marks that five mark. Worth double checking, double checking these ones. I think we've already covered this one. Really, um, just add it to your uh, notes. Again, you've got five things for four marks. Let's just check it. Uh, what we got? pH sensor for acidity levels. We will have pressure sensor for intruders. Moisture for water. Gas for, oh, so light for switching on and off street lights, which leaves gas for pollution levels in a river. There we go, forward enough. Uh, sensors, microprocessor, automatic open of doors for four marks. So again, going back to a couple of questions ago, you've got input, you have the process, and then you have the output. But then you've got that continuous process where data is going to be compared to pre stored values and the messages being sent by the microprocessor. Um, good one actually, I forgot to keep mentioning, actuators to drive the door opening. Uh, let's see, microprocessor again, you can see how um, often this is coming up. So we've got minutes A and B and C and D. So A needs to be red, B red, we compare, C and D to A and B. If they match, then send message to um, alarm. Again, good to visualize this with a flow chart. Um, good actually for the fetch execute cycle to talk about how the microprocessor, the processor is sending out control signals. Don't need to go into any depth about buses in the middle. Uh, okay, you can see the crossover part here. Identify the false conditions, the following registers uh, occur. So we've got the third, oops, let's not score it out. Uh, things you should expect to have in your answer. So that we've got 001, 00101. So the CO level's too high, the oil pressure's too low, and the brake pads are too thin is what you should be writing for your answer down here based on the ones corresponding to those sections there. Similarly, we've got 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Oh, undo that, doing it too quickly. Uh, 0, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, uh, oh should read the question first. So temperature too high. Let's stop being an idiot and actually read the question carefully first. Uh, so let's get the pen open here. Uh, temperature too high. So parity bit. Uh, oh, this is actually a bit more uh, than I thought it wanted uh, for the binary value. So 
but I guess when you look at the parity first, there's the complex part. Um, and again, I actually criticise you guys for not reading question carefully, and I've just rushed in to do it. Read the question, please. I just got into assuming that it was uh, the same as the previous one. So we want cars a faulty airbag CO level is too high. So brake pads too thin. No airbag is faulty. So we want a one here. Uh, oil pressure too low. No voltage too low. No fuel pressure too low. No CO level too high, which is the next one is a one. And then temperature too high. No. Now this is the funny one that people will probably mess up is the parity bit. If you look here, the parity bit was zero, which indicates that that is odd parity. And you can see I've got one, two, so I need to have a one here um, to ensure that the, the whole parity of the number of ones is odd. And apologies for being an idiot and rushing one far too quickly. Okay, same idea as previous questions. What we got? Light sensor for um, controlling automatic doors, street lighting, greenhouses, uh, keyboards for typing in word processors so that people can check in people at airports when scanners and things aren't working, barcode readers using in supermarkets to do automatic stock control, touch screens so that you can have ticket kiosks or um, self-checkout at checkouts, uh, on your mobile phones, on tablet devices, any of those sort of things are fine. Uh, so that's a quick response code for that one. And again, I need to slow down because I'm just assuming what the question's asking. I think you get the mark for QR, uh, actually, but I prefer when people write the full things. Let's see, uh, QR code, visiting local places of interest, describe three points. Um, could plan there uh, how it works. So you need to scan QR code with phone. This should be actually good given that we've had to scan the QR codes to enter uh, in. So well, an app interprets data and it could um, open links to documents or websites um, to get more information. All right, try and give about four points for that one if you can, just in case one of your points is good. There we go, same other one, type of sensor, street lights. Well, light, monitoring, pollution, and a lever, a river, a lever. You could have gas, uh, temperature, uh, pH could work there too, controlling traffic traffic lights, magnetic, uh, pressure, we've said before, again, I think that's covered, so I'll just skip all those ones for now. Okay, uh, again, problem solving ones. A black bar is a one, grey bar is zero, so we've got binary number A, it's going to be uh, three black ones, two greys, one black, one grey, and then B, one black, two grey, three black, one grey, straightforward uh, let's see two disadvantage is to using a keyboard um, mistakes think about how many times you, you type things and make mistakes um, it would be a lot slower if you're if you're not an expert typer compared to a touch screen uh, and I guess they, they could they break easily maybe they get dirty um, those two are probably the best two to go with uh, concept keyboard to input customer food orders. So the, cust the custom keyboard, concept keyboard, sorry, is where you would have it built around your food order options. So probably what, if you've ever did a self-order in McDonald's or anything like that, that's what they have, um, so that you can just click on images. Um, so this is, a, this is a funny one, right? So if you look at the marks here, not funny, four marks, people will get two marks for this all the time because they'll say, um, make, uh, fewer errors, which is true, but then they don't don't stop. Or sorry, they stop there and don't say um, something like press a button or an image, um, which makes it um, less likely that you you type something incorrectly and speed up order process. And then people will normally stop and just write that because, so explain is an important exam technique. You want to make your point and then ex explain it. 
I don't know if you've ever seen Peel as one of the, um, your history teachers might have used it with you about how you approach writing essays, where we want the PE part here, make a point and then explain it. Probably less training for people, um, speed up the time to enter an order because you need to complete or press less buttons to complete your order and um, it's probably easier uh, because people require training. There we go. The, the same one is bef well, similar to before, so we'll skip that. Have a practice at writing it. That's a six mark, though, so we need to make sure we've got six points. And again, it's the describe part, so always look at the keywords and the number marks. Uh, two sensors used in this. This is where they would bring up logic gates eventually as well. Um, so sensors in this one, you could probably have sensor A, a pH sensor, a gas sensor. Um, or uh, I guess temperature, oh, in fact, you know what, I did it again, I did it again, idiot. Let's read it carefully. Control using sensors to keep fish healthy, the temperature must be 25 degrees, which means I would have lost a mark here, and oxygen content needs to be 20 parts per million. So, uh, in fact, I think how they got, possibly they got gas, it's an oxygen sensor, idiot, can't type, oxygen sensor, and we want to have a temperature sensor. Again, I should probably go over a break from doing this because I'm doing the things that are typical. It's easy done in an exam of just looking at it. And I'm sure most of you guys um, did it in that recent mock. Take your time, McAlpine, and highlight the things that are about the question. Uh, there we go, maintain the correct conditions. So you can see just how often that typical question comes up with the input process output on a continuous cycle. So I'll skip it. Uh, let's see what safeguards are needed to stop the fish tank temperature. Um, let's read it again. To keep fish healthy, 25. It's got a heater, oxygen. What safeguards are needed to stop the fish tank temperature rising too high? Um, I guess we just want a warning. Uh, a warning signal if it's over a limit. Um, so if, if something comes into memory or something is it in the microprocessor rather that's too high, we want some sort of warning. So we've, we've seen this one before uh, in terms of what um, devices that we should be using. So we've got a keyboard there, a keypad, touch screen, barcode scanner, card reader, um, pressure sensor scales for detecting weight on the self-checkout. But the thing is, is this is actually helpful for people to get these marks, because you get one mark for the input device and a second mark for the purpose. So it's a bit like the uh, explain type questions where you should make a point here, and then you've got to explain it here, which is a very important exam technique. Uh, what else have got here? Two sensors used in this application in a chemical plant. Uh, same principle again there of using um, gas, uh, pH, moisture, humidity, whatever it is, just make sure that you explain it really well. Uh, so gas, temperature, motion could be, uh, pressure, pH, light, really any, any of them there would be fine as long as you describe it well enough. Uh, monitoring process, again there's that five mark question that will always come up. We need to talk about the sensor. A to D, the microprocessor, and control, the compare that takes place, the message of do something or do nothing, which then involves in that process being repeated through the microprocessor, sending messages to the sensor to request more and put there's a pattern there all the time. Uh, and this type of barcode is an interesting one. So identify the type of barcode we've got there. It's QR, which means there's three points required if we look at the number of marks that we've got in there. Uh, so scanned by camera. Um, it could be then, well, it is. It's processed by an app. You could go in there A to D if you want, but I don't think it's particularly relevant here. Uh, what else? Um, similar pro principles to the barcode of like black reflects less. Uh, the lights reflected back. We could go into a lot of detail here. 
and uh, the data is decoded, the squares is decoded. Uh, sorry. So, uh, low temperature, similar to before. Um, talk about digital to analog converters, um, feedback, that it's constant, repetitive, and then the usual, usual answer here that data is sent into the microprocessor. It's useful to practice the, the part that change for this, if the temperature is less than X or the oxygen, I think this is related to that previous question, or whatever it happens to be, then send a message to open valves, do this, do that, do the next thing. Uh, three different sensors. Uh, I guess I've already covered that a million times. Well, maybe not a million, but quite a few. Uh, describe the differences between a quick response code and a barcode. So, I mean, a diagram would be useful for this one. Um, so barcodes, let's do on this side. A barcode's 1D and QR code is obviously 2D. This has got vertical lines. Now, it might seem like you're doing the most obvious thing ever, but that's what this question's answer, eh, question's asking for. This contains squares, which is the 2D part. Um, you can get more data and a QR code, so obviously less data. Uh, what else? Um, this one needs to be lined up with the scanner, whereas the, the QR codes, they can work from multiple angles and quite often quite far away from the source that you're scanning. Um, you could say what they're used for, so this one for like um, checkouts, for stock and products, whereas this one's quite normally like information, um, like on posters, um, links to websites and so on, which again goes back to more data because you couldn't have that really in a bath. Uh, let's see, three sensors using the washing machine and again the uses again, should be getting minimum three marks here by naming the sensors. Um, so one temperature, why are we using that one? Monitor, water, temperature. Humidity sensor, monitor um, the humidity levels, I guess. Pressure sensor could be used to measure that there's not too much water in it. Motion sensor to check whether it's moving. pH sensor to check that the water is not too acidic or too alkaline. Everything goes as long as you explain it well enough. Okay, these are these are now into some different ones. Uh, operation of 2D scanner and a 3D scanner. Um, so 3D uses uh, a laser. Um, shown over the subject. Um, and it's obviously a 3D object. Duh, that state the obvious in these questions. Whereas the scanner is quite often light on a document slash image, something like that, normally a piece of paper. Um, that light moves over the object. This one is, can be handheld or the object rotates and moves, moved at different angles. Um, what does this one do? It gives us a 3D model from the geometry is the important part because obviously it gets the, the depth um, and the dimensions. Whereas this one uses mirrors and lenses, not too dissimilar to how uh, optical storage work um, to reflect light which is captured, um, and obviously we could talk in there about, let's change that, change that pencil, you could say ATD conversion, because obviously you have that um, digitization of what's scanned. So that's a six marker, so let's see light. Uh, the light moves over the object, to, uses mirrors, lenses, reflects light. So there's, there's five for that piece. Obviously we're only gonna get three. Laser shone on the subject, 
can be handheld, the object rotates, produces a 3D model from geometry. I mean, there's at least 10 points there uh, to pick from. Uh, let's see, explain what is meant by the term sensor. I mean, we've talked about these a lot. I mean, a sensor is basically an input device um, that is continuously collecting, recording, um, physical real world data. And a nice example like temperature. I mean, overkill on that one, but that's what we want to be given in the exam, demonstrating our knowledge. Again, we've seen these ones, one's about growing fruits. There's pretty much any sensors you can name and then describe, but this comes back to exam technique. You can see actually for this one, it's six marks. So we're looking for two points in each of the uses. So um, state one mark and then we're looking for two points this time. So again, just carefully read the question um, to ensure that you're picking up that one. So it's basically the first use is, uh, could be used in this system to describe how they'll be used. So an example might be uh, moisture for one mark. And what does that do? It measures the water content of the soil and alert when it's low so we can water it yeah so two points about the sensor again that's the marks of the question that give it away uh, how does the barcode scanner read the scar uh, barcode so it shines a light or a laser um it's normally a red one doesn't, I mean, obviously there's more than that. Um, the light is reflected back, and we know that black uh, absorbs. So you can see that it reflects less light back. Um, so then we get sensors um, to detect it. which obviously uh, converts to digital. Um, reflections, convert the digital for reflections to, oh, my writing's terrible again, to binary. And then, I mean, that, this is basically the same as those other ones. We can mention that the microprocessor will process it. So there's five, six months worth there. Uh, explain how the barcode system could help supermarket uh, manage its stock. That question is already covered in the flow chart. Scan the barcode. Check in stock. If it's below a level, reorder message. There's a lot. If you explain that one, um, you can automatically update the stock, automatically reorder, um, automatically deduct it. You can check to see in the database if the stock actually exists. It's hopefully straightforward enough. Infrared touchscreen, we already talked about that one. Um, so let's just skip over it. But uh, remember, it's got um, infrared. It's got the uh, electrostatic field. It's got sensors. Um, it has that... Um, calculation of the touch calculated of where the beams have been uh, split. If you go back in the video, you'll see all the points where that wants to move on. Again, barcode type, QR code, we did it. Uh, explain how the data in that barcode is read. I believe we've already covered that one of how you scan it with uh, a camera. The camera turns it into digital. The squares are recognized in red, black, and white reflections and so on. Uh, let's see, capacitive touch screen. So we already covered about that one. Again, four marks describe. So try for five points if you can in that one. So remember capacitive, the way I remember that is I have, well, in front of me now, the capacitive touch screen on a very expensive device. And I think, yeah, that takes up a lot of my money that's in my bank account. 
So that makes me immediately think of uh, how the iPhone works. So obviously, um, or the iPad or most mobile devices, think about how we can only use um, the uh, stylus and anything that will um, allow that conductivity to take place so you can calculate where the touch is because we've got the, the four corners of the screen um, emitting that current to complete the circuit. Uh, presses an icon, why is her action not registered? Explain why the touch screen will not register her touch. Um, so again, we kind of just covered that really. Um, it's uh, the whole uh, capacitive nature, so we need to notice it's capacitive and talk about how that the this circuitry needs to be completed sorry the the touch needs to be calculated by completing the circuit so the fact that her gloves are not allowing the the charge to flow so she doesn't want to use uh, anything um so how could she do it you can get capacitive gloves now that's only one point all right look at the marks here that's not going to get us the two marks that we need. Um, capacitive gloves allows uh, the charge to be changed or conducted. Is that the right word? You physicist will probably tell me off. Um, you other other ones you could use voice commands or you could use a stylus. Don't write ridiculous things like you could touch the screen with your tongue, even though it's kind of would work actually, but that's just a bit silly. Uh, let's see, factory systems using control light. So we've already seen all of these questions before. Again, six marks, plan it out first, the little diagram where you've got your input, you go to the microprocessor, you've got messages to the output devices, and then that process completes. And obviously this is analog, this is digital, so we've got to convert it and it's a continuous process, that part there, we've got the comparison going out to the stored values. Try and memorise that diagram when you're talking about the flow here to get all X marks. Let's see about weighing babies and stuff like that. Um, so I guess let's just fill it in. Pressure sensor would work for uh, doing anything to do with weights. Turning off a kettle, well, I guess temperature when it's boiled. Don't know, will not be lazy full names, temperature sensor, controlling um, an automatic door, pressure would work, but it, it tells us to use a different type. Um, so for that one, we could do light, infrared would also work, monitoring the air quality, gas, uh, or, why do I keep writing oxygen weird? Gas or oxygen, and counting cars crossing the bridge, can't have pressure, uh, so we could use magnetic, which is what is normally mounted on traffic lights, but sometimes they bury these magnetic coils under the ground, that when the cars roll up, there's a great picture of a car, it can detect them, so you quite often get the magnetic detectors on top of the traffic lights to detect when cars come. Um, infrared could be an option uh, also for that one to detect things when uh, the bee tripped. Try and connect the fact that the infrared sensor is the same principles of the um, infrared touchscreen as well. Touchscreen um, at the screen station goes back to a prior question where we talked about concept keyboards. Uh, or at least I hope it was concept keyboards. The idea of you've got touchscreen. Um, so less chance of error. Now we're in luck here because it's only three marks and it's state. Be careful if it says explain because then we need to say less chance of error because there's a limited number of options that you can put in there. Um, you could have no need for peripherals. So that would help make it less expensive less likely to be broken by problematic users. Uh, what else we got? Uh, touchscreen, I guess, like weather might not impact it as much if it was like a keyboard that was lying out. Uh, we could have uh, a menu-driven interface, as in 
if you want to buy a ticket to go to the centre of town, you click the menu button for that, um, it should speed up processing and it's searching for train information so you could have buttons to make it easy to interact. I mean, it sounds like I'm writing the same thing there. Less chance of errors, one, buttons to interact um, on the screen for a menu driven interface rather than command type answers. Resistive, we already talked about, we drew this amazing diagram where we had the two layers and then I drew this incredibly detailed picture of a finger, even with a cuticle, let's get some dirt under the nail. But when you press onto that layer, um, the, the point of contact is determined. So things like this, point of contact, my goodness, my writing, calculated when top layer pushed onto bottom layer um, and what we can add on to that one completes the circuit um, there we go there's four or five points from that maybe In fact, the only thing that I guess I missed out on is that the um, the currents flowing out from uh, all corners of the screen. So when you press down, that completes the circuit. This handwriting is amazing, really sorry. But I guess it makes you write your own notes, I guess, maybe, is my excuse. I've just got bad handwriting. Let's see, uh, used to control the temperature in the hospital. Again, look how many times that question comes up. You probably hate me drawing that again, but you've got your sensor, which is A to D, going into your microprocessor, which is communicating back and forth with uh, everyone. You've got it happening on a continuous loop. The messages is going to be again sent out here to the temperature. Uh, not the temperature sensor, it will be like a heater to tell it to be on or off. Um, and obviously analog to digital and is going to be checking if it's uh, less than 21, it's going to turn it on. And if it's greater than 24, it's going to turn it off is where the six marks coming from there. All right, so we've got quite a lot. For these, you should have time in the exam, draw a little flow trap not not like very detailed just like you get the input you do the process to check if it's bigger than 24 and then you tell it to turn off if it's less than 21 then you, the microprocessor sends a message to turn it on uh, that's a continuous process that's constantly happening and obviously analog to digital conversion must happen because the sensor is detecting a physical real world um, data that needs to be converted from analog to digital. I keep answering that question even though I say I'm not going to. Tough. All right, barcodes uh, in this situation. Uh, let's see, hospital, medical records, unique barcodes, barcodes, get a medical test to scan it. Um, well, I guess in that one, it's quicker than typing. Um, as it can be scanned and another one I mean it's, it's kind of a similar prospect less chance of error than typing on a keyboard so again this one's exam technique and looked right away and said it was four marks I've seen the command word explain this is a classic where people get two out of four because they're not reading carefully that they need to give four points, really. But that's actually quite a, a short four marker, that one, to be perfectly honest. Uh, describe how the barcode is read. I think we did that one already with the, the light be scanned and so on. Again, there we go. That question comes up. It seems to come up every other year. Or I mean, the likelihood of it coming up again. Five marks. Draw your flow chart. I'm skipping it this time, but here's a smiley face just because you were expecting something. There we go, another one, pH sensor between 6 and 8. So if it's less than 6 or it's greater than 8, what do we do if it's less than 6? We are going to get the microprocessor to send an alarm. There is a wee light that's going to come on. And then the other side's this amazing 
how do you draw a bell? All right, we'll just pretend that that's a bell and a message gets sent to, to that to monitor that it is uh, out of an acceptable range. Now we go another one with the same principle. Let's skip it entirely. Uh, an input device. Well, goodness me, if we need anything, any help with this one, um, it allows data to be entered into a system. EG keyboard. Give examples. Get into good exam habits for things like that. Easy. Oh, well, there we go. Did it already. Keyboard. Give a straightforward one for that. I mean, there's tons. Touchscreen, microphone. You know what? Uh, two sensors. Um, what's that for? Different competitors. Right. I guess the ones that they have in swimming, I believe, is pressure sensors that you touch at the end. You could have light. You could have infrared. How many times have we seen the same thing up again and again here? There we go. Another six marker. Here is another smiley face since we did that one already. Let's give this one a cool fringe. There we go. Uh, name of devices or an output device for each of these ones. This is good stuff for your notes because this is really what you want to be writing in the exam. So shining a light onto the surface, the light source is automatically moved across the document and it uses mirrors and lenses. That's a 2D scanner, so be careful that you don't just write scanner because I would argue um, that it's not technically correct. And in fact, let's see the second one. Input device where a laser light source is moved across an object. The width, height and depth, and in fact, that's not, that's what I could have written in my previous answer. We said the geometry. Um, so what, e.g. word height and depth, that's good to add to our notes. So that one's obviously a 3D scanner. So basically this um, part here, if we'd have written that for the 3D scanner and then this one here for the 2D scanner earlier, great, that's the sort of thing that I would be expecting to look up in my notes. A large input device fixed to a wall. User can calibrate the device to make sure the sensors align with um, that can use your finger or a special pen. So if you think about what I have in my room, I've got that whiteboard. So let me just say it's an interactive whiteboard to give it its proper name. Easy, that's a lie. No, yeah, it's three, um, hopefully. Uh, input devices connected to a personal computer. Yeah, millions, there's three on that last question on that board there, so there you go, answer stolen. There we go, yet another one. I need to draw yet another smiley face. There we go, six marks in the bag. Let's hopefully uh, we have it now. Um, what we got here, describe how the capacitive touchscreen registers Amy's touch. So if you wanna think about um, how that works, you've got the one screen this time, but you've got that electrical charge distributed across the full idea, uh, full idea, the full screen. You have these sensors which are laid out all across uh, the screen on the edge uh, that read that electric field. When you touch it, and there's another brilliant drawing of a finger, uh, the charge is transferred onto the user uh, to complete that circuit. Or if you're using a stylus pen, um, that conductivity is what uh, completes the circuit and the measurements can be carried out using these sensors to detect where that touch has taken place. All right, four marks, important you get four points minimum. There we go, Res resistive touch screens, we already talked about that one already. So resistive is the two touches that you can't push your finger through the bottom one. So think about that resistance, try and connect it with uh, words that you are very aware of. So we've got uh, calculation carried out where the two layers touch, the top layer touching on the bottom layer, the person presses on the top layer to complete the circuit. All right, four points. Let's get five things written for them. Uh, one information device that you could use for that one, touchscreen, keyboard, microphone, mouse, take your back, nice and easy. QR code, we already talked about that one. Uh, so look back again, describe four marks write sentences not bullet points even though it would be okay so we've got the illuminator we've got the light the reflection the corners are used to uh, orientate it you could scan it using a camera or on a device the app that you need to have to interpret it just to say there 
two benefits of using sensors. Uh, well, humans are rubbish, so avoid human error. And um, I guess for this one, if it's a dangerous environment, i.e. like the Chernobyl reactor and so on, well, it saves human beings being hurt. They are also consistent. They are instantaneous. They are continuous. Uh, analog data, that's the good one that's coming up. So it's, um, you could say like it's a continuous wave. This one's good because it's not come up. Wave of, uh, what do they call it, non-discrete. Um, continuous, where they said data. Now you, for this one, you could describe, you could say EG sound wave because it's the perfect example is to say like that wave constantly changing versus the binary, uh, sort of the digital representation which uses ones and zeros only. And in fact, yeah, get an example in there is very, very good to support you. Uh, there we go. What is meant by digital data? I guess the opposite is discrete data, um, one or zero only. Yeah, binary ones and zeros two values, something along those lines. Again, by example, gets you the maps here. Okay, this is a good one for your uh, for your notes. And in fact, if you were smart about it, I would go back and add in um, resistive capacitive and the other one that I've completely blanked, uh, the infrared one. Oh my goodness, right, pretend I did say the correct answer. Uh, the touchscreen multi-touch capabilities, we know that uh, the resistive is that one touch and it's cheap. So it's the, the capacitive one that's on our iPhones, it's got multi-touch capabilities. The infrared one uh, also has multi-touch, if we're going to make another comment for that one. Touchscreen cannot be used wearing gloves, that's also capacitive. These uh, these two are fine. Resistive screens on the flights, you could probably best use in gloves because they're probably disgusting. And the infrared one is using uh, light beams that's cut, so that's fine. Uh, resistive is the two layers with the space between that you click um, the top layer on the bottom layer. Uh, electric properties of the human body or a stylus pen. Uh, cheaper to manufacture is obviously resistive is the cheapest. And then, uh, oh, that's a tricky one. I don't know what the answer is. It's obviously um, cheaper. I would think the infrared one uh, versus the capacitive being the most expensive. And then the uh, faster touch time for that one. It's probably not great to add infrared there. What would be a better plan there actually is to create three tables for each, a bit like a logic gate so that you can kind of draw on each of them at the same time. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Um, so, so when you press a key, it um, is basically a switch. Um, completes the circuit. Uh, similar to the screen presses. Uh, let's see, you, I guess if it's on a, a screen, it, the location is calculated. If it was a keyboard, they send different signals along, is kind of how it works. Um, so let's think what else we want to say here. Um, it's going to it's going to search an index, some sort of index, where we know that each character, each char, has either ASCII or a Unicode value, which has a binary value that corresponds to it. Now a good thing to put in there is is actually the keyboard presses are interrupts that are sent to the CPU, which can then be processed. So again, like you, you can think about that in terms of a diagram. So you've got the keys on your keyboard there. You press one, that obviously the letter A, if that was A you pressed, needs converted to its binary value, sent to the microprocessor, uh, or the CPU in this case actually it would be, which can then send a message to update the letter A on your screen. Um, but there's obviously a little more to that. These are the kind of boring parts of the course that I really wish they would just take it. Not exciting at all. Uh, input devices, easy, covered, sensor and microprocessor. That looks nearly identical to some of the previous ones. Two input devices, easy peasy. And then last question again, how many times have we seen this exact same question? I don't know. There we go. 
finally done all of these and there is your final smiley face. Seven marks actually, that's an absolute beast. So uh, seven points, I mean probably about an eight or nine in some of the previous ones. Uh, there's more in that to do with time. Just make sure you look at that and think automatic lights make points that go back to uh, enter the room and the natural room light is less than 10 or less. Talk about how the different sensors are used in that. Obviously it's going to need to use a timer on it as well so that you can figure out if the, there's any need to switch it on. 